1913 is uh, squarely in the middle of what's called the progressive era in American politics. And a lot of good things happen in the progressive era and a lot of really bad things happen in the progressive era. Um, we had the kind of split in the Republican Party that happened during that era with um, Teddy Roosevelt and the Bull Moose Party. We had a lot of interesting things happening during that time period. And in 1913, actually, in March of that year was when President Woodrow Wilson, who I think is one of the single most dangerous people to the American Republic, took office. And there were three big things that happened that year that, in my opinion, um, obviously, there's other things that have happened since. There's other things and issues that have happened with the country. But I think if you look at the three core issues that we're dealing with as a country right now, I think the three of them happened in 1913. Number one um, is the Income Tax Act of 1913. Um, we also have the 17th Amendment, um, which changed the um, process for how we vote for the Senate. And I'm going to get into the, each of these a little bit more and explain them how we got here. And also the Federal Reserve Act, which passed two days before Christmas. So anyway, so... I think if you look at these particular things, um, they're what takes a lot of our sovereignty, right? Like before 1913, um, I've seen these memes online that say before 1913, people kept 100% of their income. That's not 100% true because there was an income tax that was levied after the Civil War. Um, I think it was dropped sometime in the 1870s. Um, there was also another income tax, I'm going to get into this, that was levied in 1894, which we're going to talk about. Um, and then the Income Tax Act actually happens in 1913, and it wasn't reinstituted till later that year, is when we actually see the taxation starts um, in the country. It wasn't ratified until October, the Revenue Act of 1913. All right. So anyway, let's go back to kind of how we got here. So I want to take a look at income tax is the place I want to start, but I want to explain why I think these are the three three main issues. Because number one, people kept a lot more of their money. Like I, as I mentioned, there were small taxes that happened here or there, but I'm not going to say you kept 100% of your money because it is untrue, but you kept just about all the money you made, which means, you know, you would work for something, you'd pay for it. You wouldn't work half of the year to pay the government for something like a lot of people do now. Some people work more than that. We also penalize producers, which I think is a really bad idea, right? We're like, oh, tax the rich, penalize the rich. Well, sure. Are some people doing stupid things with their money? Absolutely. But at the same time, business owners and people starting businesses are what give jobs to other people. I think people have this weird idea that jobs are created by the government. That's just not the case. Sure, they can be altered by tax policy and all these different things. But the government, though they employ a lot of people, are not responsible for the main parts of the economy. It is business owners and it is producers. Um, and I think, frankly, um, I think it's wrong to tax people for being producers. I just, that's my, my viewpoint on it. There's nuance within that. We can have a future discussion on that. But anyway, so I think Handling income tax would also handle a lot of poverty, handle a lot of issues people are dealing with. It would handle it would handle a lot because if you look at it, the super rich have figured out strategies to not pay their taxes anyway. This ends up just squarely hurting the middle class. So that's income tax. The 17th Amendment. 17th Amendment, what happened there um, is basically um, previously before 1913, Two houses of, of Congress, if you don't know that, by bicameral legislature is what it's called. And it's similar to the upper house and lower house in um, the House of Commons and the House of Lords in the UK. Like it's a similar idea. Um, and when we look at that, Congress has the larger representation. It's based on population in each state and you get a certain number of people representing you. The Senate was different where every state got two people representing them. Now, the difference is uh, the Senate was selected by by state legislatures. So you may have a state that's a very, um, in some ways, like let's say New York State, right? New York State as a whole is actually a pretty conservative state, but there's pockets, right? Like Albany is very um, democratic. New York City is very democratic and actually outweighs most of the state because the population is so high. So what would happen is 
the state legislator, legislature, so the people that govern the state may actually be more conservative because they're selected in more conservative areas, right, of the state. And those people then select their representatives and they would represent the state legislature. So you'd have this balance of the state has a say at the state level, and then you also have the people have a say. Like, it's really, really important. So the 17th Amendment got rid of that. And I'll get into what that means in a couple more minutes, but I don't want to like kind of dive into the whole thing here. And then the third thing is the Federal Reserve Act. And that's where Congress, which is supposed to have the ability to levy money, lost that ability. And it happened over the Christmas holiday, which is pretty wild.